My heart is to see God's people full of passion and the fire of God, hungry for His presence on a daily basis, full of His power and having a positive impact on the world and those around them, living a life of freedom and victory. This is Running With Fire. It's great that you could join me today. I'm one of those people that read the paper, watch the news virtually every day. I guess I'm almost a little bit addicted to it. The reason I do this is I like to keep abreast with what's happening in the world and the lives of people around me. One of the things that really amazes me is the disproportionate amount of disasters, tragedies, huge disappointments that people face in our world and in our society today. It really is quite troubling the extent to which this is happening. And I sometimes watch these stories and I wonder how on earth can people survive some of these extreme disasters and tragedies that are all too common. In this message, I want to share how God can turn the most disastrous tragedy into a triumph. I know it sounds unbelievable, but why don't you join with me and hear what I've got to share. I think this message will encourage and inspire you. Please stay tuned. One of the great challenges you and I are going to face in life is that it happens to all of us is the need to handle life and circumstances when things go south. When we face setbacks and disappointments and hurts and sometimes even tragedy, maybe a failure, maybe a mistake, a broken marriage, uh, you know, some uh, difficulty that you're facing in your work situation. It, it could be a, 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 a something that you regret that you have done, but it could be sickness, could be financial bankruptcy. We don't like times like that. I don't like them. I avoid them like the plague. I say, God, get me through and get me through quickly. If I need long suffering, give that to me quickly as well. I want out of here. And I mean, most of us are the same. We don't like these times. But could it be, and all of you are going to say yes to this, but could it be that God could use this list of things I've given you and anything else you want to add into it and work out of it something incredibly good? How far can we go with Romans 8, 28? In all things, in everything. Everyone say everything. In everything, God works for the good of those who love Him. In everything. Put in your trial right now, in financial bankruptcy, in broken marriage. God works for the... Really? How many of you believe that scripture? How many of you live by it? So whenever you go through a trial, you say, yippee-doo, victory on the way. How many are like that? Give me another wave. About three. Okay, proves my point. You see, we actually love Scripture, but we don't always believe Scripture, or we don't live according to it. We're going to explore this a little bit today. So let's go to John chapter 20. Fascinating passage of Scripture. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, And said to them, they've taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Thought he'd been stolen. Peter therefore went out, and the other disciple, and we're going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the other disciple, that's John, outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloths lying there. Yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb, and he saw, that the linen, he saw the linen cloths lying there. And the handkerchief had been removed around, from around his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. Why would you fold up grave clothes? We'll have a look at that shortly. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first, that's John, went and also... And he saw and believed. Now, most people don't talk about grave clothes. When was the last time you asked a person what are they going to wear in their coffin? Has anyone ever asked that question? Don't go there. It's not a a smart question to ask. People won't appreciate you asking them that question. Well, Apostle John is the exception because he talks quite a bit about burial clothes. 
He's into burial clothes. And at first, the burial garments to John are a symbol of tragedy. He, oh, where's my Lord? Where's Jesus? What, what's happened to him? It was a sign of disaster. But then on Easter Sunday, the first one, God took the, takes the clothes of death, the burial cloths, and makes them a symbol of life and victory and triumph. So the grave clothes... Tragedy, Friday, Easter, Sunday, victory and triumph. And God can do the same for you and for me. God can turn your trial into a great victory and a great triumph if, if you will wait and watch. Earlier in the week, Jesus has been hailed as king coming into Jerusalem. Early in the week, by Friday, they're calling for his death. Isn't it amazing how quickly things change? But John didn't know what you and I know. John didn't know that Friday's tragedy was going to turn into Sunday's triumph and victory. He didn't know that. He didn't know Jesus would rise from the dead. So I have a question for you and for me today. What did John do? See, Jesus died on Friday. Sunday, he's risen. What did John do on Saturday? Between tragedy and triumph. Well, the Bible actually doesn't tell us about Saturday. All we know this is this, that when Sunday came, John was still there with Jesus. He had not left, even though Jesus was dead. Now, you would have thought he probably would leave. I mean, these guys have just grabbed Jesus, nailed him to a cross. Any of his followers was next in line. If I was John, I would have found an excuse. Get out of here. Run for your life. Well, he didn't. He could have found plenty of excuses. Maybe he didn't have a suitable place to go. Could be a lot of reasons why he didn't disappear. Or is it possible that he stayed because he loved Jesus? You see, to John, Jesus was more than a miracle worker, a healer, a master, a teacher. one to be crowned king. To John, he was also a friend. And you don't leave a friend because things have gone wrong. You hang around. You stay. And that's what he did. And John was always one to stay close to Jesus, closer than most. And friends, that's the key. I want you to think about this time in John's life on Saturday. Between trial, tragedy, and triumph. Maybe it's Saturday for you. Imagine how confused he was. This Jesus, our Savior, he's gone. He's dead. Imagine how disappointed the turn of events was for John. How he would have felt the the pain of losing his dear friend. He would have been wondering, what's going on here? He, he, He would have struggled so much with this tragedy. So when it's Saturday in your life, what do you do? You're confused. You're broken. You're hurt. You're in pain. You're disappointed. You're confused. Things have happened. You thought, I I never would have ever thought this would happen. But it has. That's where John was. And it's Saturday. What do you do on Saturday? 
Because what you do on Saturday is the key to your whole future. It's the key to life. It's what you do on Saturday. And what did John do? John stayed with Jesus. John hung around. And because John stayed close to Jesus on Saturday, right? He was there to enjoy the triumph on Sunday. You see, the burial garments were still in their original state, undisturbed, <clears throat> which is bizarre, is it not? Body's gone. You expect the clothes all over the place. But no, they're nicely folded away. And there's a huge message for you and me in the state of the burial cloths. See, if friends or even the enemy had taken Jesus away... They would have, maybe even if they'd unwrapped the body, they would have unwrapped it, thrown the stuff away and cleared out of it. They wouldn't have stopped to fold up the clothes almost in perfect condition. And initially when John sees it, it's a, a symbol, the grave clothes are a symbol of, of defeat and, and tragedy and disaster. And John didn't know what you and I know now. He didn't know that no one had taken the body until verse 8, when suddenly his eyes are opened. And we read these words. It says that, he, that he, he saw. What did he see? He saw the grave clothes folded neatly, and he believed. He realized, no, this body hasn't been stolen. He is risen. He is alive, just as he said he would be. Tragedy has turned into triumph. Isn't it amazing, friends? Isn't it incredible that through the rags of death, John sees the resurrection power of God. Isn't it incredible that the burial garments, the burial garments become a symbol of triumph? What are your burial garments today? What, what tragedy are you looking at? Is it in those areas I've mentioned in relationships or finances or health or family or loved ones or, or something that I haven't even mentioned. What are your burial garments today? God wants to take those. And the whole message of resurrection is he can take the, the, the worst of burial clothes and transfer them into a great and glorious triumph and victory and success. You see, our God is the master, the master, the master of turning defeat to success, tragedy to triumph, failure to victory. He's the master. And he can take your situation and turn it for good if you will dare to believe what this book teaches. According to your faith, be it unto you. If you don't believe he can turn tragedy into triumph, you probably will never see it. But I dare you to believe the book. You know, God's done it so many times. I think of the children of Israel. The, the Egyptian army's right behind them. You know, in the, the front of them, the Red Sea. I mean, they're facing certain death. This is defeat. This is disaster. This is God. What on earth is going on here? And you know the story. God miraculously parts the Red Sea. And so this Red Sea, this, this wall of opposition in front of them becomes a symbol of triumph and of God making a way where there is no way. <laughs> David's running for his life. Mad King Saul just wants to kill him. Get rid of this guy. He's trouble. He's chasing him. He's hiding in caves in the wilderness. Not for a day, not for two days, not for a week, a month, a year. He's there for years, a decade plus. He's probably thinking, God, it's all over. The promises are gone. I'm not going to be king. It's not going to happen, God. I, there's no way this can work out. 
But you know the story. God raises him up to be Israel's greatest king and running for your life in caves and hiddenness and betrayal become a symbol of God preparing his man (laughs) for great impact in the kingdom of God. Could God do something similar, similar in your life? You bet he can. Rafael Rosales was a minister in El Salvador. The Salvadorian guerrillas tried to kill him. They left him to die in an automobile that was burning away. He managed to escape, but he couldn't escape the scars. He was badly burnt. They say he might never have recovered if it hadn't been for an incident a bit like John, who saw and believed. You see, it took a moment of revelation, a moment of insight, Ah, an aha moment. Jesus spoke to Raphael and said to him this. He said, they did the same to me. From that moment, Raphael began to see his scars differently. And that changed his whole attitude. And they reminded him of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. In time, he was able to forgive his attackers. Then he went back to the country that he had left, and he planted a church. Tragedy turned to triumph once again. That's the Jesus I serve. That's the Jesus that you serve. So can God do the same for you? I'm sure he can. You simply need to do what John did. Hang around Jesus when it's Saturday. You see what a lot of people do. See, when it's Friday, Sunday, and everything's going well, hey, God, I love you, I worship you, and I pray and I read my Bible, and I, God, I'm willing to serve you. But what do you do on Saturday? When it's all turned to custard, do you hang around Jesus? You see, friends, what a lot of people do is on Saturday, they say, God, if you're going to allow that in my life, if you're going to permit this to happen to me, I'm out of here, God. I will not serve you. I will not love you. I will not give to you. I will not worship you any longer. God, you promised me the abundant life, and now I'm on Saturday. God, forget it. The deal is off. I'm gone. But my Bible says the righteous run into the name of the Lord, not away from God. What a lot, friends, what a lot of people, and this is a testimony of tens of thousands, if not millions around the world. When Christians hit Saturday, friends, they run, they leave church, they stop serving God, they backslide and they're doing whatever they're doing out there on Saturday. But friends, If you don't hang around Jesus on Saturday, you won't be there for the triumph of Sunday. You will miss the whole thing. And it's almost like the devil does a double number on you. Not only does he put you through a Saturday, but some people, you know, and Saturday is a time where you've got to to love God more. You know, isn't it amazing? Saturday, think about Saturday. The time we need God most, we leave him. Something missing, friends. The person who can help you through the tragedy, you depart from them. You, on Saturday, you need God like never before. You need to pray like never before. You need to read the book like never before. You need to worship like never before. You need to be in church like never before because your answer is Jesus. He is the answer. He is your hope. I wonder, friends, I really wonder how many Christians have missed the miracle of Sunday because they didn't hang around on Saturday. I think of Job. None of you have had it as bad as Job, I don't think. Job lost his family, his kids, his possessions. He was a wealthy man. He lost his health covered in boils. 
Friends visit him, can't speak for about seven days. It's so bad. I mean, he's beyond tragedy. This is absolute disaster. His wife says, curse God and die. Come on, Job. If that's what God's allowing in her life, get out of here. But Job doesn't. Job sticks with his God. He said, I know my Redeemer lives. And I will see him. And Job hangs around. You know the end of the story. Job ends up with what? Twice as much as he had at the beginning. I'm asking you, how many of God's people are missing out on the twice as much, are missing out on the triumph because they mess up on Saturday. They depart on Saturday. Or they don't guard their heart on Saturday. They don't continue to worship. They allow bitterness to get in. They allow unforgiveness to get in. They allow hardness of heart to get in. On the Saturday, friends, I'm going to say it again. Countless multitudes of God's people have lost it on Saturday. They're away from God. Lives are a mess. Families are a mess. Finances are ruined. That twice as much the triumph God had for them dissipated on Saturday. And friends, can I tell you this? Everybody faces Saturday. Don't, don't sit there thinking, why have I been picked out for a special raw deal? No, no. You haven't been picked out. It's the pattern of Scripture. It happens to everybody. Abraham, Moses, Joseph, David, Daniel, Paul, Peter, if that's not enough, Jesus himself. It's life, friends. <clears throat> But you've got it in you, with God's help, to run to Jesus on Saturday. I want to give you a tip to know that you're doing it on Saturday, doing it right. You know you're doing it right if you're getting closer to Jesus on Saturday. That's how you know you're doing it right. You're thinking, man, I've never been this close to Jesus in my whole life. That's how you know. It's not just hanging in there on Saturday. We can hang in there, friends. But no, it's running into Jesus and finding him in a greater way than ever before. <clears throat> Why don't you try this exercise? Take Romans 8.28. Everything works together for good, and replace the word everything with your grave clothes, whatever you're going through. So John would write, in burial garments, God works for the good of those who love him. Raphael would write, in scars, God works for the good of those who love him. What would you put in there? In sickness, God works for the good of those who love him. In marriage failure, God works for the good of those who love him. In financial strife, God works for the good of those who love him. In betrayal and disappointment and bad decisions and mistakes and failures, you, you put in your own burial clothes because nothing is exempt from everything. Anything, you name it, you can put it in there. Adultery, put it in there. Pornography, put it in there. The worst of sins, put it in there. Because there's no limit to the resurrection power of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. David at Ziglag lost everything. You know the story. His children, his wives, friends, possessions, his own men were going to stone him. This is the midnight hour for David. It doesn't get worse because now his own men want to stone him to death. David has hit Saturday. This would be the biggest Saturday of his life. You see, you're going to hit many Saturdays. It's not just one. They'll keep coming at intervals. 
better you handle this sad day, you'll be equipped for the next one, and you're equipped for the next one, and the next one. David had been through a few sad days, but this was, I think, the biggest one of all. If you read the passage of Scripture, it says this, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. He reached out to God. When everyone had turned against him, when everything had been taken, David pressed into God. He worshipped God. He reached out to the Lord. What David didn't know, friends, was that within, I think it was days, Saul, his enemy, would be killed and David would be crowned king over Israel. He was a breath away from triumph, from tragedy turning to triumph. He was one Saturday away from the greatest moment in his life when he would fulfill his high calling and destiny in God. And friends, I want to suggest to many of you here today, you are just Saturday away. It's just Saturday, one Saturday away from God turning your situation right around, from tragedy into glorious triumph. Whatever challenge you're facing today, Whatever challenges you've faced in the past, God is the master of turning your trial, your trouble, even your tragedy, into triumph. If, if, if you stay close to Jesus on Saturday, you love him, worship him, serve him, Give him your best shot on Saturday. I recommend to you, if it's Saturday, serve God harder and more than ever before. And show him that you don't depend on your life going all sweet and smooth. You're a lover of God and a worshiper of him, regardless of the day of the week. When it's Saturday in your life, Stay close to Jesus, because if you do, you'll be there on Sunday to see the great triumph. As you've heard this message, you may be thinking, there is no way my tragedy can turn into any kind of triumph. My Bible says, with God, nothing is impossible. It's my prayer that God will turn your tragedy into a triumph. Hey, I would love to hear personally from you. Why don't you take a few moments, contact us via the website on the screen, send us your testimony or your feedback. We would love to hear from you. Join me again next week. Thanks for watching Running With Fire with Tark Barna from Church Unlimited. For more great free content, visit runningwithfire.com. You can send us your prayer requests, stream online TV and radio episodes, and view blog articles. You can also connect with Tarkbana through Twitter for regular updates. Church Unlimited meets at two locations in Auckland, New Zealand. You're welcome to come along for a visit.